Hi, I'm Kenny Pappenfuss. Great to be here at Millstone Studios. And uh, yeah, looking forward to this. Well, according to my mother, I was playing guitar before I even knew what a guitar was. Apparently I was lifting the brush in the house and I was miming along, playing guitar. I was probably two or three. So, it's, it, I was just born, it's in me, you know. And, and uh, when our parents used to go and visit friends and we'd go along, um, I'd spot a guitar in the corner and that would be me entertained for the whole day. So, it was the only thing that got me away from the football. Um, and here I am. I'm not a footballer. <laughs> Brian May wrote us a beautiful letter and, and spoke about how much he loved our songs and we grew up with the Queen's Greatest Hits album in the house. And, uh, you know, I suppose in many ways it was his guitar sound that was the guitar sound in my head because it, it came at such an early age, as was the Beatles. And, you know, it's, it's no coincidence that I'm brought back home to Vox. It is the sound in my head. So when I plug into Vox, it makes complete sense. It, it it sort of is the historical musical education speaking back to me. So um, yeah, and certainly having Brian as a, as a champion of what we did in our band uh, is is more than an honour. There's so many people, events, occasions, too many to speak of at this point in time. But I'm really humbled by the life I've had up to now and the experiences we've had. There's a guitar in the front window and it was for sale and it cost £20 which at the time was quite a bit of money and lo and behold I used to have a habit of walking and looking at the pavement when I walked I didn't sort of look up and look around I just sort of walk with my head down uh, which I still do on occasion unless I'm in a city I don't know where I am. During this walk, as I did, um, I found 20 quid and went home, told mum and dad, I found 20 quid and they're like, what? I found 20 quid, I can now buy that guitar. And I took it home. And I knew why it was worth 20 quid. <laughs> But it made me a, a very, very, very solid player because it was a horrendous guitar and the action on it was incredibly high and it was brutal and uh, it was the best lesson I ever had in many ways. Um, and that guitar is now a speaker in my spare room. It took me a while getting the Vox I was kind of stubborn. I, I did have another British amp, which I loved, uh, but it didn't always work for me. And I had an American-made amp, a very expensive one, which was a beautifully built amp. Uh, and I, I do miss it for that reason. It's beautifully built. Um, but I would run into Voxes in the studio. And when you're in the studio, you're under pressure and you're looking for that sound. And you, you're probably fighting to try and get it. And then you run into something that's lying in the corner. And you plug in and you go, that works. But, but you know, my, my, my uh, political musical head says, no, I'm not playing that. No, I've got my 3,000 pound amp here and that's going to be played today. And that's all that's going to work. And that's it. So we go into another studio and there's another Vox and we plug in the same thing. This can't be happening. Let's ignore that. 
let's just keep playing that very expensive shiny thing in the corner uh, because that's what it said on the tin and that's where I am and that's it and we're not even going to discuss it right and I don't care if my drummer and brother keeps giving me those looks of oh look at that look what happened there I'm not interested I'm going to play that very expensive amp and then I suddenly just give in to the fact that okay I keep playing this amp and it keeps working for me let me just buy one see what happens and I'm, I'm addicted to it I just love plugging in and playing I've got pedals here in front of me today but it doesn't matter I just plug I mean I, I effectively used one of them during that performance but I can happily just go straight into a Vox, and uh, I, I can't say that about any other amp that I've used, just straight in. Very, very fortunate to play with my brother all through my musical career, and the two of us played with uh, uh, Shanita Connor for a long time, toured with her, and uh, it was uh, fantastic playing with her every night. Uh, she was incredible, and all their songs are very different, so the Vox again met the challenge. It, it, all the effects I was using, and sometimes no effects. My band Relish, we got our record deal. We were signed to EMI. That was that was huge. We spent a lot of time starving and working, and that was a big achievement for us at the time. After that, it was the success of our albums, getting a gold and platinum album in our own territory, getting to see countries like Japan and having a number one single in Japan and going to countries like Indonesia and people singing back to you. There's still a lot for us to do uh, in terms of relish. Uh, and th that's, what, that's what gets me out of bed in the morning, is the excitement of, of where we're going with that project. and, and uh, Playing with great people. Playing with you two at Slane is a standout event for us. We got there by invitation from the wonderful Larry Mullen and team. Um, so thank you, you two. It's hard to quantify success, and the funny thing about events in your life. Um, is you tend to only think you've done something after you've done it and not while you're doing it. So looking back, for me, the most interesting points in my life were when I was challenged to do things right out of my comfort zone. Playing with Paul Weller was certainly something that I really felt the pressure on. Uh, I mean, Steve Craddock's one of my favorite guitarists. And uh, don't tell him that. I stepped into Steve's shoes for a while and, uh, you know, I felt the pressure of just living up to what Steve does, never mind making Paul happy. But I still had to bring myself to the table and I think it worked. And I enjoyed it and I learned so much from it. So occasions I got are the occasions that I love the best, where I'm in a, I'm in a new environment, new people, and I've just got to deliver the goods. Getting on the Late Late Show, um, and actually ending up playing on the Late Late Show uh, in the in the house band there and playing with uh, some wonderful artists and just having a brilliant time. What a great band we play! Great musicians. <laughs>